Hello, and welcome to Zim Explore. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this Zim Explore, we're going to take a look at stars. Oh, how exciting! <laughs> Suitable for an explorer. Okay, so it's a rating system, and there's a little bit more to this than meets the eye. Uh, for instance, check this out. If, I, if I'm voting for, and then I come to submit, you see what, what happens is as I come down, I lose my star rating. So we've worked out a system where you click and then you can come down and submit. Yet they might change their mind. So if you come back in, it then allows you to vote again. So we'll click there for the all the stars. When we hit submit, we get a confirm on the button. And if we don't hit the confirm within a certain amount of time, it won't submit. Now, you don't want to really do that for voting stars. It would just be annoying. But we wanted to show you that Zim's got that built into the button. So we're going to confirm. And hey, there's our average. Not a bad average, huh? <laughs> you want to see that again? So I refresh the page. And let's vote a low one here. So we're going to vote there and submit. Confirm, and there's the average. So the stars actually um, explode or whatever they do from the average. So there's no stars over here. It's, it's, they're all shooting up there like so. And this is the, the average according to the server. All right, so we've got some exciting technology to make all of this work, uh, including binding and record locking to take a look at. This is all done with the mask. It may be that you're more interested in this part. Now, this is all part of the Zim base package as well. So if I press on the Zim base there, well, let me show you where it is back from the start of Zim. So here's the start of Zim. If you press into code like that, You'd have to scroll down a lot. I've got a bunch of things hidden in the code section, but if you scroll way down, it's in Zim Base here, uh, like so. And Zim Base is a way, it's a PHP class that Zim's made that allows you to access your database at a third the MySQL I. It does use MySQL I in the background, it just um, wraps it up and makes code easy. There's a couple uh, learn JavaScript with creative coding, <laughs> but mind you, it's, it's on the data side, data lessons that then take you through what Zim Base does. So you can find those in the Zim school or in the, in the Zim learn section where we go through all of the data aspects of this. And here, here are the examples that run that, and we're doing this example right here. So there's a zip file, so you can grab the PHP and the HTML from, from that zip file. All right, let's reduce down and take a look at some code, shall we? Here it is. I'm going to open this up in a browser so we've got a local version of it going here. Good. And here we are. Now this is using 10.9.1 of Zim which at this very moment is not quite launched yet. Uh, we've got a lot of things happening in Zim, and that's exciting. So we're moving to a new version, but we can't really move to 10.10, .10, and we're not going to 11. So we're doing something else, and that's coming up. It may have already happened, depending on when you see this video. But we have launched this just temporarily with a Zim underscore base, so that the base examples will work for you. We're coming down into a Zim frame, and we've got the plan. We're going to, well, you've already seen the plan. Basically, it's uh, we just looked at. Now, the, uh, but how to do that. So here's how we do it. Uh, you can read about that if you get the file, but here, here's how we do it. We've got uh, a tile that is our stars. So there's a new poly class that's giving us the stars. So we're tiling stars. And these are the background stars that are white in color. And then we're putting other stars on top that are purple. So uh, the same kind of stars that are purple. We're ex expanding that quite a bit there so that our rollovers activate in between the stars. We don't want to roll over only on the stars. 
So, or click only on the stars. We want that stuff to happen in the whole square area. So expand is a nice easy way to do that. It also allows for some interactivity around the edges of it by 40 pixels. That would be a default of 20 pixels. You can also set it to zero pixels if you just want it to, or you know, minus pixels. But anyway, we're setting it. And you can specify um, two numbers in there for the width and the, for the uh, horizontal vertical. We then have a mask, and that mask is the width and height of the stars, and it's the color of the frame. And we put that at the bottom. Otherwise, in Zim and at CreateJS, which we inherited the masking from, uh, it's kind of a funny thing. Usually when you have a mask and you set something to, to, or you mask something with that mask, the mask disappears. Or at least that's what I used to do in Flash. Here, it doesn't disappear, and that can be good and bad. Uh, if you... <laughs> <laughs> There's uses for both. But anyway, if you don't want the mask to show up, then you probably want to drop that to the back. So we put it at the bottom and set it to the frame color. You could probably also set that to clear, I think, is another route to go. Anyway, we're locating that at the same place as the stars, and then we're setting that mask. Now it's important that we make the mask dynamic because uh, that takes processing actually. So by default, masks are not dynamic. And once you set it, that's all you get. But if, if the size of the mask has to change, then just pass in true here and that will constantly be analyzing the mask to see if it needs to, to be reset. So there you go. That sets up the stars. Not too bad, huh? Good luck making that in HTML. Okay, so um, unique votes. One of the things we're doing with bind right here is we're binding to stars, and when we bind to a string like that, it just automatically means we're binding to local storage. You'd have to put a .php or like an HTTP or some URL thing in there to bind to uh, a, a server address. But if you just put in a, a string, a simple string like that, it means it's going to bind to local storage. Now, what are we going to bind? We want to know if we voted or not. Well, we don't have a Zim display object that tells us whether we voted exactly. So we're just making a custom object right there with a voted property. Uh, this will not have, though, the normal dot bind method. If, you, if you're binding to something like a blob or a circle or a text area, those are Zim display objects and they've got a dot bind. So um, if you're binding to an object like that, an object literal, then you can use the add method of bind. So right on, chain that on dot add. We give it an ID. We say what object we're binding and uh, the properties. If we had multiple properties, it would be in an array. And then here we're, we're zogging. Have we voted? Has the user voted? You might be wondering, well, hey, wait a minute. You know, <laughs> voted is false. Of course we haven't voted. Well, that's not necessarily true because what bind is doing is it takes a look at the property in the object, takes a look at the property and says, or in the ID, I guess, takes a look at the property in the ID and says, do we have any data? This is, this is going to go get some data and it gets it from local storage, the stars and local storage. Do we have any data for the user, uh, whether we voted or not? And actually we do because as you'll see below, uh, when I voted, Previously, like I voted lots of times already, previously um, we set this to true. So it's actually true. Shall we check it out? If I go here and F12 to our console, user has voted is true. So this is saying true because this already handles whether, you know, knowing whether we voted or not. All right, where do we do that? Uh, go quickly way down here, <laughs> so I don't scare you. <laughs> Is it going to be a long explorer or not? Uh, where did we vote? Vote, 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 animate, vote. There it is right there. So this is on a button click. User dot voted is equal to true. And then we sent that off to the connection. And that's it. That handles our voting. So this is saying, hey, we voted. Please remember that. Send it to the connection. And then up here, this is us saying, have we already voted? And if so, present it. Uh, neat, huh? 
So that's voting. Now we let the user continue to vote there just because that's that's fun to do. But what you would do is use this information to either show the vote button or not show the button. Uh, we, we haven't gone in and done that. All right, exploring. So here's the stars interactivity. Now remember that usability, there's that usability message that we, it's sort of a two-step process. If it weren't a two-step process, this is what it would look like. Uh, let's copy it to here. It would just look like this. True immediate, we wouldn't need that anymore. Uh, if we don't have to constrain, it would be this calculation right here, just to simplify our vision a little. There we go. Stars dot movement. This is new to uh, the latest Zim. <laughs> you might be wondering, why the heck haven't we done this yet? Um, it's like a mouse move. So in Zim and CreateJS, there's no mouse move on an object. There's only a stage mouse move, which captures mouse movement on the stage in general. There is a mouse over on an object, so you could ask for a mouse over on an object, and then at that point you can start collecting the stage mouse move. And I've always hated the stage mouse move. It's a long name for an event and a little bit unusual. And, and so anyway, you capture the stage mouse move, and then when you mouse out on the object, you remove the stage mouse move event. And that's quite practical because to put on every object to, to, to monitor whether the mouse is over, there's just a ridiculous amount of processing for, for that. However, um, I'd rather not do the three steps each time I want to capture a mouse move on an object. So what movement does in Zim is exactly that. All it does is set those three events for you and removes them when you don't want them. So that... Uh, that looks like this. Basically, you get a callback function when there's movement. <laughs> I had a hard time figuring out what the heck to call that thing. Uh, mouse movement. We're trying to match short chainable methods like hold and <laughs> tap and stuff. I'd rather not call it stars.mouse movement. Um, so we called it movement, which is sort of fun. We were thinking wave and wand and whatever your hand does over it it also captures the thing is it's not just mouse movement maybe it is it's hard to say it also captures press move because if it's mobile you don't have mouse move like a, a mouse so we made movement work for both uh, mobile and desktop where it either on desktop it captures um, just mouse movement and where on mobile it captures a press move so you can use this for for all that stuff all right basically we're setting the masks width only uh, to the frames mouse x so that's where the x is minus the star's starting position so the mask then just becomes where you know it, it does yeah, Hopefully you get that. It does <laughs> what we're wanting it to do, where if your mouse is halfway along the stars, it will show the stars from the beginning, from the beginning of the stars to wherever your mouse is. Now we're using width only because if you used width, it would adjust both the width and the height to keep the aspect ratio. So Zim does that with uh, width. If you just set the width, it's uh, it would do both the width and the height. So you don't want that with the mask. All right, so there's that. That's what that looks like, except we have to wrap that. Uh, that would work fine. It's just we only want that to happen when we mouse over. And if we click, so here's the tap on the stars, we don't want that movement anymore. But we have to be able to get that movement back again if we mouse over again. <laughs> so like I said, <laughs> it's like, Argh. So here's the, the mouse over event. When we mouse over stars, we're going to set the movement. But movement is triggered by a mouse over and that mouse over has already happened. So we added uh, an extra parameter there to say, please start capturing immediately and not wait for a mouse over. And that is set to true there. That sets our mouse movement. We did add the constraint to make sure that the width was constrained between zero, so it didn't go negative. The thing about capturing a mouse movement is 
as as you sort of if you had that 40 pixel spacing around the thing you could actually be 40 pixels to the left and you'd be less than zero so this would be less than zero or 40 pixels to the right and that would be more than the width and if we're using this exact scale here from the mask by the way the width really only sets the scale so when you're setting the width only to half the width uh, that means it's scale x is 0.5 that's that's how it works so it's talked about here so we're going to use the scale x of the mass to determine the rating well we don't want a negative rating so this is doing the constrain on that that's just running a math.min and a math.max uh, on top of each other <laughs> in behind the zim constraint. All right, how you doing? Do you like these explorers? I mean, I'm just rambling on, aren't I? Like telling the story of code. So uh, hopefully, I, I mean, it takes the pressure off me if I don't have to worry about what I'm saying to you guys out there. So I hope, hope you don't mind. Uh, maybe if I laugh a lot, it just makes it okay. <laughs> Okay, now that was that a fake laugh? I think that was a fake laugh. All right, no fake laughs. So stars dot tap. That was us removing the movement. So we're no longer going to capture that movement. Okay, new to the next version of Zim. Yay! All right, binding. So we come in and we're going to bind now. <laughs> well, uh, great. So here we are binding to the database and we're using a get or we could set this to post now. It doesn't matter. We're turning our reports on. It's always fun to see those reports. That's uh, these things along the way here, a bind report. Watch what happens as we vote. Submit. Confirm. Oh, wow, we're getting, like, reports are coming in. These are, This is what was sent, and this is, <laughs> et cetera. So I like that, huh? Those are the reports on. And here, the set default true. What's all that about? This is actually new, too, so 10.9.0 doesn't have it. Uh, we, As we were making this, we ran into the issue. We've already done a bind up here. So this is the Zim default bind. When we go to set the binds on the object. So let's find it. There it is. So here we are setting the bind on the mask. That's a method of the display object. It really doesn't know what's going on with the bind object. All it knows is what's the Z default binds? What's a Zim default bind? And that's what I'm going to bind to. Unless you pass in, you can pass in another parameter here, which is like way the heck down the way. It's like three or four parameters. You'd have to put nulls in there and then specify our bind. So you could do that for every time you bind afterwards to specify the bind object, or as we realized, maybe this was better. There's a parameter that sets that allows you to set this bind as the default bind going forward. I'm kind of thinking, I wonder if that should just be set to true. I don't think so, but anyway, you can set that to true, and now we don't need to worry about it when we bind the mass down below. Now here's another tricky part. The mask itself does not have a votes property and we're wanting to bind to the number of votes. So here's the deal. Oh, big sigh. Normally when you go to vote, let's go take a look at the site. Normally when we go to vote, we're going to make a vote here. Refresh. What happens is the data from the vote would get sent to the server and the server it would put it into the database as a record so each vote would be a record doot, 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 doot. that's probably the most normal way safest way because then you you know if, if one record breaks you still got all your other your other data uh, what it would require though is when i want to find out the average vote we would want sql uh, to run an SQL command there to average those, or if you don't know SQL, because a lot of you know backend people might not, then you would probably just use PHP to say, hey, give me all those records, and then I'm going to calculate the average and then send back the average. But if you don't want to work in PHP, which I don't, and I don't want to use SQL, I would rather just say, hey, send my stuff, get my stuff. <laughs> Don't do anything on the PHP. I just want to do everything in JavaScript here. So we can do that. There is a way to do that. Um, and that's what we're going to show you here. So keep that in mind as we continue to 
to dig in to this. Uh, to do that, though, we need to receive the votes. If we know the votes and we know the average vote, uh, then we can here on the uh, in the JavaScript we can take our vote and add it to that and then send back the new average. Okay, that's that's the plan because we want to do it here in PHP uh, here in JavaScript. We don't want to do it in the PHP. All right, so unfortunately nothing really has votes, so we could make another object like this up here. We could make a data a data object and it has. This is whether we voted or not. Uh, actually, now we couldn't use this one, the same one. This one wants to go to local storage versus the database. Um, we could make another object and bind to that. Then we're binding both to the mask and to that date object, no problem. Or if we want, we can just throw the votes onto the mask. When you do, you've got to make that property there. So mask.votes at the moment is zero. It uh, doesn't actually matter, but there should be something there. And now we're going to bind to that. Isn't that neat? So, uh, super. And we call that one stars, which is just the reference to this bind. It's not the same thing as this stars up here. Up, down, up, down, up, down. That stars is the name of the local storage. Uh, nothing really to do with it. Uh, this one had a binding of user. Okay, so the other stars that we were looking at is, is similar to this thing where that relates to the binding. That stars up there was which uh, that, that relates more to, to this, like what is the whole bind to put on. All right, anyway, blah, 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 blah. So we're going to bind to the data uh, ID of stars, and here's our properties that we're going to bind. Great. Now we have our button. The button has that. Uh, there's the confirm thing on the button. So the submit, the confirm, and here's our wait time. So we're going to wait three seconds. Ooh, little preview. What is this time in seconds? What's going on here? Yes, the um, upcoming Zim, well, or the, you know, maybe if you're watching this, the latest Zim, I'm not sure, is in seconds. There's a way to turn it back to milliseconds if you want, but we've decided to change everything over to seconds. All right, so coming on down, handle vote. So we handle the vote. Oh yeah, we missed a little bit here. When we mouse down, and this is important, when we mouse down, we check to see if the button is waiting. If the button's in a waiting state, then we handle the vote. Otherwise, we don't do anything. Now, it's important that we use a mouse down as opposed to a click or a tap. A click and a tap uh, clears the, the waiting state. So you've got to do it on the mouse down because on the click and the tap, it's going to clear the waiting state. Okay, so there you go. Uh, that's clicking confirm. We're going to handle the vote. Hey, now we move into the fun stuff here. Ooh, handling the vote. Well, <laughs> we're going to turn a lot of things up. So we don't want to capture any movement anymore. We don't want to restart the movement. <laughs> so that's that, that double issue and hence a sigh there. Because if we just turn off the movement, if we rolled over it again, we'd end up starting it again. If we just turn off the rollover, we might still be capturing the movement. You know, we may have already rolled over and captured the movement. Probably not, though, because we're down here at the button. So may, maybe we don't need both of those. Perhaps if we just turn that off, it would be fine. Anyway, to be safe, we'll turn them both off. We clear the weight, so we, we don't want the button to show the weight state anymore. And we're going to adjust what the button says. It's going to say loading while we wait for our... our uh, or I don't know, patience or whatever it is. We're not exactly loading a vote, are we? But um, yeah, what should that be? Hang on, <laughs> please wait, <laughs> dot, 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 whatever. And we're also turning the buttons enabled to false. So we might, depending on the situation, we might remember to have to turn those things back on again at some point. If, if, our, if our vote doesn't work, we might want to give them another chance to vote, in which case these things might have to come back on. All right, binding. So great. Let's just show though, this is binding. Yeah, let's see. Uh, right, so in the binding, we're either going to be successful or not. So here's the callback of the binding. Are we successful or is it broken? 
and that's where we do some more things. All right, so we'll get to those later. So we are here at the binding. Now, imagine this. In other binding examples, we often will, uh, say if we have a, a collage, when we go to bind the collage pieces, we immediately, on the bind, we call a from. And that from gets us the data of the collages, the current data of the collage. And then we make the collage pieces and apply the current data to them. So the location of them and the size of them. So we bind and we immediately call a from. Don't do that in this case. Because imagine this, we, uh, we arrive at the site and we bind and get the current data, get the current votes from the server. We spend some time voting, five minutes, 10 minutes, <laughs> half an hour. And then we submit and we send off to the server uh, based on the current data that we had, which is no longer current. It's five minutes old, it's 10 minutes old. So basically anybody else who has voted in that time, their votes would be overwritten by our stale data. Okay, so we don't want to do that. So what we would do is instead of doing the from at the beginning, when we are ready to vote and we hit the submit of the vote, we would call a from. We would say bind dot from here from. And that would give us a callback function. And in that callback function, we would get the data. That's right here, data. And we'd manipulate the data. Data dot uh, votes is equal to uh, or plus equals one or something like that. Uh, quote plus, geez, plus I can do it equals one. I think I've been talking. I haven't been typing. Isn't that right? So that's us manipulating the number of votes. Of course, we probably wouldn't do that until we calculate the new average from it, and then we would increase the number of votes, something like that anyway. So we, we change the data, and then we go bind.2, and that sends the, the data that we changed off. So it would be this kind of process. Now, a problem with this is when we get the from, it's going to go off to the database and get the latest data. But then it spends a little bit of time sending that latest data to us here on the, on the client. Uh, maybe a second or however long that download takes. 0.5 seconds. Or, point three, or, or 3 seconds. You know, maybe it's longer. And we do the manipulation here. That shouldn't take long. Because remember, we've hit the submit button. And so we just have to do a quick calculation here on the new votes. And then we send it back. But that sending back might take some time too. So by the time it comes here and goes back, it could be a few seconds. And what happens if somebody else votes within that time? What would happen is our data would overwrite their data. So the solution to that is to lock the record. So we get the data from, and when we do that on the server, we would lock that record so nobody else can look at it yet. We do our calculations and we send the data back and that unlocks the record. So that's record locking. It's been around for a while to do that thing. And what we've done is wrapped those steps up into one command, boop, Gandhi, called to lock. So to lock, what to lock does is it combines a from and a to. So it sends the from first and in doing so, it also passes a lock ID that we're gonna see on the server. The server then locks the record and sends back the information to us. We manipulate the record and we manipulate the record in the filter here. We'll see that in just a second. So we manipulate the record and then two will send the new data back and unlock the record on the server. So that's the process we're about to explore here. <laughs> Isn't that exciting? All right, so a little bit more about the two lock and about the filter. The filter is the fun thing. Filter is a way that you can run a function on the data and get the data and the command and stuff like that. You can run a function um, at different stages in the binding. So we can run the function before we set, bind the information. We can run the function after we bind the information. In the case of the to lock, uh, or in the case of the from, say you're getting data from, yeah, it by, you can run the filter before you send off the data to the, the uh, database server, and you can run the 
the uh, filter after we receive it back and just before it actually binds the results. When you do a two lock, wow, it's even more. You get one, the from two, you get the from that comes back, and then you get to run the filter before you send it to. And when it comes back from the two, when the results come back from the two, that's when you just call the callback. So the callback is at the end. You don't need a filter then. So each time you're given a command. So in the filter, you're given the data to work with, and you're given a command. We want to manipulate the data not before we send send the information, but actually once the infor once that data comes back from the server, that's when we want to manipulate the data. So here is us manipulating the data, and then we return the data. So all of these fil like the filter, it's only one filter, but it runs each time. So it's only one function, but it runs each time and is given a different command. All of the runnings, though need to return the data. So it's not this is, is not you don't just take this and put it in here and say, oh, I've manipulated the data in the from, I'm going to return it because then the other times, the from two and the two, they didn't get the data returned to them. And that would make a little warning in the report saying, hey, you may not have returned the data. <laughs> okay, could be trouble. So uh, there you go. So just leave this down here. We return the data at the, at the end of the filter function, always. So in the command of from, how do we manipulate the data? Let's explore that, shall we? Ooh, yes. Uh, hey, do you remember where we are? <laughs> We're in an explore. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I had uh, I I wanted to remember where we're from, and I wanted to bring up the explore music. <laughs> so I bring up the explore music, and it's not playing. It's like ah! anyway, <clears throat> we're on it. We're in a Zim Explorer. So much for a failed effect. Uh, so let's explore how we manipulate that data. First of all, if we're uh, sending the from to, we may not even have this data. It turns out, um, yeah, so if there is no data yet, then we're going to set some data. So it may, may be that we never received a scale X or a vote or anything, so we, we just got to watch that, unfortunately. So if there's not any data, here's what we would want our very first data to look like. Now, is that true? Yes, it is true. Just be careful. This is tricky. You might say, oh, uh, the data that we're sending is just this. Now, this is what I did. I, I did this the first time. Like, I forgot. This is not what the data looks like. It, it's close to what it looks like. It's not just the votes in the scale X. This is the data for the, for the one binding, and that binding is called stars. Okay, if we were binding something else in here as well, you would have something else, blah, 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 something colon, and they would have perhaps different properties. So the data is the full binding. Even if there's just one thing we're binding, you still have to put that one thing. Okay. Now, what are we going to do? So, uh, oh, if we're going to manipulate this, instead of saying data.stars.vote, we're just storing data.stars in a local variable called stars here. Now we can say stars.scalex is equal to blah 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 and see how we're using the stars dot stars dot. Now just a little bit of a thinking as to how we are going to manipulate the votes. What's coming back to us normally is some total number of votes, say 20, and some average uh, scale X. Now remember our scale X from 0 to 1. 0 is, hey, 0 votes. 1 is 5 star votes. Uh, 0.5 is 2.5 star votes, etc. So scale X is really the proportion of, of our vote. And what would be coming back from the server, what our data would normally look like at this point, because remember we're asking data from the server, if people have voted already, then our data usually looks like 10 and, you know, like uh, 4.5, call it, 4.5. No, 
<laughs> that would that, that would be our data. <laughs> I'm testing you. Yes, I'm testing you. It would be like something like 0.8. Okay, so it's going to be something from 0 to 1. So 0 0.8 might represent 4 out of 5. I guess it would, right? 0 0.8 is 0 0.8 out of 1 is 4 out of 5. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, right. So our data might be something like 0.8 here. I want to just look at this and get, imagine 10 votes. So imagine this is our data coming back now. Well, what we can do to convert that is if you multiply the average by the number of votes, this would be 80 in total. And if we're going to go and put another 0.5 onto that, we can. We could then could say 80 plus 0.5. And that's that's all we need to do. Isn't that neat? So multiply the the number of votes by the the average and you'll get a total. Then add our vote to that total. And to get the average again, so here here we are. There we are multiplying the this is the, the stars. Let's see, stars dot scale x. What is that? Uh, this is stars right here. So this is our data stars. Stars.scalex is the current average. We're multiplying it by the votes. We're adding the mass.scalex. That's our average. That gets a new total. We divide that total by however many people have voted. 10 plus 1 because we've just voted 9. And this gives us a new scale x that we want to send back. We also have to remember to send back the votes, which is stars dot votes plus one. Probably we could have plus equal one there or something, and it would have worked out without having to do that, but whatever. This is probably more clear, <laughs> if you can call it clear at all. Okay, so just a little bit of calculation to adjust the average that's coming back to the to a new average. Now this stars is stored inside of data. So when we adjust stars, we're adjusting what's inside of data. When we return data, that data has now the new data. It's got the new votes. It's got the new, um, the new average. Cool, huh? It gets returned, and that's really all we have to do. I mean, it, it, it looks like in here we're doing some complicated things. But really, we're binding the two lock and saying, oh, by the way, when we get data back from, I want you to just change it a little bit, and that's it. Isn't that cool? And we don't have to worry about what we're sending to the database exactly or how it gets sent there. We don't have to worry about setting, you know, this is, uh, this is here. Like, once we get data back, let, let's do it. Let's vote. Submit. Confirm. You see how that got set to that place? We don't have to worry about that. The binding handles that ourselves or itself. Isn't that cool? Like I don't have to worry about how to set that. Um, it's just bound to the scale X, which is the vote. So whatever vote comes back, that's what the scale X gets set to. Whatever we set the scale X to start, that's the data that gets inserted in the filter. So we had a little bit of filter concern here you know, one or two lines in the filter. If we didn't do it there, it would have to be done on the database or, you know, on the, either on the, in the SQL or in the PHP somewhere. But we know what we're doing here. It's like I'm, I'm working here right now. I don't want to have to go to the database. This is where I'm working. And so this system allows that to happen. When we get the call back, we're either successful or else it's broken. So uh, whatever the result is, it, we're going to get a success property or, or not. And we'll take a look at that on the server. Here we are calling success. Often I would probably just run an anonymous function here or an arrow function in here and another arrow function in here, but uh, just decided to break it up a little bit. <laughs> you know, it's, it's already uh, a little lengthy. So when we're successful, we set the text to success. We make it so that we can't click on the stars. So we take off the tap on the stars and we run the emitter. Oh, yay. We're going to emit those new poly stars of different sizes there. So that's using 
yay, we're back in Zim. Isn't it nice to be <laughs> sort of more back in Zim, just doing the front end stuff? Yeah. <laughs> so here we are uh, sending three different sizes that could be used for the radius of the polystar, some more information about it, some colors. We will set that to be the mask's width. So, and we're, we're going to run it horizontally. So this is, uh, it's not often that you do a, an emitter that has a, 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 a width or a, or a height, but you can. So you can set this to horizontal. You can also set a vertical. If you set both the horizontal and vertical, then it just emits from all over the place, from like a big rectangle of whatever that works out to be. If you set it to horizontal, it's going to emit from a horizontal line. Vertical, it would emit from a vertical line. And then we're making sure that we animate the rotations. We're animating some more than others. So that's uh, 720, and this is whatever that times 2 is, 360 times 4, both in the negative and the positive. So some stars will spin to the left, some stars will spin to the right, or you know, whatever you want to call that. Ease of linear for rotation, usually that's best. And the time, look at that, the time in seconds. So that's uh, how long the animation will last, which mat matches the life of the life in seconds as well of our emitter. We're going to make it emit more stars than just usual, like five times as many, and give it a min to max scaling. Otherwise, the stars all look like they're at the same level. It's just like poof, and they all sort of shoot out at the same force. Although we have adjusted the angle, so that might make it look a little different because they're going off on a negative angle. Remember, positive angle is to the right down the x-axis. So if we want them to shoot up, that would be minus 90 would be straight up. We can make them all shoot straight up. If you want to see that, that would just be, hey, give me 90. Give me 90. Now let's uh, take a look at this. Let's vote. Confirm. <laughs> I gave you 90. 90 straight down. <laughs> you should have been saying me, give me negative 90. Yeah, give me negative 90. <laughs> now let's give this a good vote because I'm not sure. May as well. Good vote. Confirm. See, they all shot straight up and fall straight down. Well, we didn't want that. We wanted uh, a range there. So sometimes I even do this. I go negative 90 minus 20. Or well, I think I had it probably more like 30. And then I go negative 90 plus 30 because it's a pain in the neck to work with the negatives there, isn't it? One day, who knows? One day, maybe the next version of Zim will make the zero degrees point up. <laughs> Uh, no, we won't. I, I promise you. But anyway, here's how we uh, deal with that. Negative 90, we know what that is. That's that's going up. And then minus 30 is more to the, the left, and plus 30 is more to the right, so it'd be fine to leave it like that. All right. Hey, it's a Zim Explorer, right? And anything else in there that you want to see? Is that all good? A height of 20. Why did we do that? Well, it turns out that the emitter has a default width and height. And if you were to set the horizontal, then it would just run along that default width. And if you set the vertical, it runs along the default height. We did already set the, the, the width to be the, the, the mask width so that our stars go uh, across the rating stars, not across the empty part of the stars. The height will move that up and down a little bit. You could set that to zero, but what you don't want to leave it at is 100. If you leave it at 100, it's going to be 100 up from where you expect, possibly, or maybe 50 up, because I think we center reg the emitter by default. So anyway, we just adjusted that. The other thing you could have done is, instead of just centering it, uh, you could have uh, centered it and then adjusted it with a move like dot mov and zero in the x and you could have moved it up negative 20. So <laughs> you could have done that to move it up. Instead we just gave it a height of 20 and probably moved it up only 10. As mentioned I, I believe this will be center reg by default inside it. So then we're locating it at the stars x. Because it's center regged we have to add half of the mask's width. Because remember, we're making it as long as the mask, but it's center regged. So we started off at the star's x position, uh, which is left, top left corner. 
and then we add uh, add half of the mask width. And this tells us how many we're going to send out. We're going to send out 60 stars. Now be careful, it's, it's sort of fun with that. Often we're lower, we, do, we don't spurt as much. But if you increase the number, then it would just like do 20 and no problem. It'd be just like five sets that you go like that and it'd be done. So uh, if you, whereas if you do this and have the number one or the default, then it would go bip, 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 bip. it'd like be 20 shoots. But if you did this, it'd be only two shoots, bip, bip. and it'd be like two batches of stars would flip out. So sometimes if you increase the number here, then you probably want to spurt more. I think that's what we had it at. You can also spurt via time. So this is time here. It would be now be in seconds. You can say, hey, spurt for two seconds. <laughs> It'd be like, ay, 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 at which point you would put null here. <laughs> Do you want to see that? I haven't done this in a while. Let's see if it works. So we refresh here. It's an explore. Why not? So we submit, confirm. <laughs> Two seconds worth of stars. Okay. Yeah, it's just like, all right, what's going on with those stars? So we don't want to spurt two seconds worth of stars. At which point, then, it wouldn't matter how many we do. it just always go for two seconds. Okay. Animating the button out. We don't need to see the animation of the button go out, but we're also animating uh, a thank you message coming in. Holy moly, how are we doing? We like to keep these explorers to under an hour, so we're, we're at 45 minutes. Yeah, it's time to get a cookie. You guys want to go get a cookie? Hmm. All right, so that's our day devoted to. Now, if it's broken, then we want to be able to vote again. So some of these things are turning our voting stuff back on. I Think, or, or did we not? We've broken stars. There's our mouse over. Yeah, that, that's fine. That's all we really have to turn back on because when we mouse over that, it's going to turn back on our uh, our, our motion capture thing there. <laughs> Neat. And we had to we change the text to broken. We get, That's giving us a warning. Normally you would do this stuff in a pain. We're just putting it all in the button because we're a little bit lazy and to show you that, hey, that, that could be efficient for you. Maybe you don't have enough room for a pain. I like the, the idea of some interactions happening in a button there. So that's what we're doing. After that time, though, we change the color back to the normal color, the normal message, and we have to remember to enable the button again. I didn't enable the tap, though, did I? Nope. So uh, what was that on? That was on the stars.tap. Oh, darn. If we, if we turn the tap off, I, I don't think we can just turn the tap back on like that. It means that we've got to add the whole thing. So there it is. Sort of too bad. I don't think we have any memory of it. I wonder if we could record this in a variable and then say stars.tap and then pass in the variable there. That would probably be good. Okay. Anybody want to um, submit a request? Zimjs.com slash slack and you could request that to be changed. And where are we? We're here. There we go. All right, make sure that we add the tap back. If there's an error, that is, if there's an error, you're probably, you're probably stuck with no internet connection. But hey, you know, so be it. No internet connection. Keep on trying, and this will come back and make it work for you. Good. Uh, by the way, when we build something, almost every time we build something, there's something else we want. Or something that doesn't work, a little bug. If you want something, come to zimjs.com slash slack and put it in the requests. If something doesn't work, come to it and either ask a question about it because you're not sure, maybe you just did it wrong, but if you really know it's not working, <laughs> put it in the bugs channel. And either one, it doesn't really matter. So bugs channel, questions channel, request channel, zimjs.com slash slack. Hey, uh, help out. You know, we'd love to love to have you there. We're always happy to make things better for you. All right, and we've got a header there. Now you might be thinking, we're done. <laughs> we're done that explore. Don't worry, we're gonna get it in less than an hour. No problem. 
Well, uh, we haven't looked at the server side yet. Okay. So anything in here in the header? Not really. We're probably good to go. That looks a bit silly, doesn't it? You can specify, this is the Zim icon, and yeah, I don't know if you remember, that is the icon that we're using with Zim base. So Zim base looks has that icons everywhere. If you go to the various commands of Zim base, there's just the plain icon. So here we are in Zimbase. This is how we're connecting to the, the database from the server. We've gone in and done the Zim thing, made it one line to do to collect all our variables. Made it, and actually with using Zimbind, you don't even have to use that line. Zimbind will do it for you. Here's one line to insert something. Mind you, you then will need to uh, grab an error were you successful or not maybe yeah, you don't have to there's one line to update and at that point it's updated <laughs> um, so these things are five or six lines in my sqli and they're complicated with binding well we've wrapped that up to make the binding easier this might be all small for you sorry about that and then here we are selecting from the fields. Now we've gone and made a bunch of data videos on how all of this works. So we're not going to really go into it too much here in this Explorer. We'll go into it a little bit. We'll talk about the record locking side of things. Although we also did that in the Learn JavaScript, <laughs> surprisingly. <laughs> Learn JavaScript, even though this is PHP. Psst. Um, but this is the PHP so that we can just continue working in JavaScript. That's the, you know, as little PHP as possible. Uh, that's what this is giving us. And you can come here and take a look at, at through all of that stuff. Uh, it's at uh, zimjs.com slash base, zimjs.com slash base dot HTML. And here uh, is that PHP that we're talking about. Let's go up to the top stars.php it's in the zip file because of course you can't see php code if you're just on the web there so you'll have to grab the zip file from that url i just said and now you can look through, and you can look through that so we require the zim base inside of that zim base file that's where you would put the uh, username and password for your database and the database name but other than that you just require that we're going to have an ID of stars, so our table, our record, looks like this. It has an ID. It has a lock ID. It is a var char. This is, I think, an integer. Uh, var char, and this one is our JSON data as a text, as a string. So three fields, ID, the lock ID, and the JSON, that's our data. Okay, so back up we go. We automatically are given a lock variable by zim bind and by zim bind specifically the to lock so this is a lock id unfortunately lock is a reserved word in in the database so we can't use a lock field <laughs> seriously come on so we're going to use a um, lock id there we should look into that like if it is a reserved word maybe we could have done locking in an easier way or something but anyway here's what we've done the first thing that happens is that to lock asks to get data from so we're going to collect the from the command gets given to us automatically by zim bind and and zim base here on the side we just get given dollar sign command hey great so if that's from then here's what we're going to do we're going to set the lock we don't even have to really test for a lock id if you're if you're collecting data from the server and you're not using to lock and you're also collecting data from the server and you are using to lock then here's how you would handle that hey if if this from is receiving a lock id then we're going to lock otherwise it wouldn't but in this case we're only getting the from with the lock id so we wouldn't even need that there you'd be looking at hey set lock so zim base gives us the commands in here to set that record, including if somebody else comes in now, it's going to sleep. So it will sleep until that record's unlocked or until a maximum of three seconds or whatever it's set up. can't remember. Okay, so all that record locking is handled for us by Zimbase. It's not all that much, but it's, you know, th three SQL commands and some sleeping stuff. You probably haven't dealt with sleep in PHP. So uh, it's nice to have. We pass it in the ID and the lock ID. 
create. So this is different. We come into here. Here's how we can select information from Zimbase stars. We're selecting the JSON where the ID is the ID. We've only got one field. We don't even need that. So that gets us a result. And we reply, if we don't do any error checking, hey, we don't even need that. <laughs> OK, but probably want to put some error checking in there. It's saying, please reply with the JSON from the result. Neat, huh? So if you wanted to, you could put this right there. Hey, please reply with whatever you select, the, the JSON from whatever you're selecting from the database. Nice, huh? So two lines of code, the locking and that. If we're sending two, no, oh, I've got that down here. <laughs> okay. If we're sending two, um, th this means we're sending our boat to the database here. Here's what it looks like. Please insert to our, our table the ID and clear the lock ID. Because now we're, we've just successfully received some latest data from. We've locked the, locked the thing. We've recalculated that latest data. We're sending it to. So when we send it to, just clear the lock ID. So no, no reason for another um, method or anything to clear the lock. Just pass in. <laughs> Possibly there is. If you, I don't think so. It would mean a, an extra statement or two, and, and we probably don't need it. Um, so just clear the ID. Now, this is an interesting situation. We're inserting. Why aren't we updating? We're not updating because this command right here, what this is doing is actually this. Let's read it. Insert into the stars, the ID, the lock ID, the following values. Now that's the that's the um, MySQL binding, MySQL I bound prepared statements to get, a, get around uh, SQL injection, MySQL injection. So this is the safe stuff. So we don't let well, anyway, never mind about that. So anyway, those are the values that we're going to put in. But then check out this. On duplicate key, update just these two things. So don't bother updating the ID. So isn't that neat? If there's, no, if there's nothing in it, then insert it. Otherwise, update it. And that's great. I really like that. And so we built it right in to the insert. We insert to this database the following. But... If there's a duplicate key, then just update those right there. Okay. And don't forget to set the lock ID to nothing in both of those cases. And then we get an error back. So if we don't want an error back, hey, there we go. So if we were <laughs> to kind of delete all this stuff, let's let's have a let's have a look at what we've got. Oops. And we could have done that one line. Like so, and we do want to have a lock, and get rid of that. What do you think? So, when we receive data from, please lock and uh, send back the current data, the current JSON file. If we're sending data to the server, then please insert or update that data and clear the lock ID. Good luck doing that with MySQL I, even MySQL. This is like a third the size, if if not, and without without even thinking. I mean, there's a little bit of thinking here, but yay team! <laughs> Woohoo! And ladies and gentlemen, uh, this has been <laughs> I'm trying to again this bloody thing. I'm trying to get this dramatic music to come up and and fade it up like that, but the music has stopped playing. All right, this has been a Zim Explore. I am Dr. Abstract. If you're if you're digging these explorers, if you're still here, then surely, surely you would want to join zimjs.com/slash/slack. Join us in there. All right, we'll see you. Have a great day or night. Ciao.